Hey guys, it's Mickey. I'm in my bikini because it's really freaking hot in Australia right now. It's like 33 degrees. And as soon as I'm done making this video, my ass is going to the beach. So if you've seen the thumbnail, you kind of already know what this video is going to be all about. I actually was really scared. I've been wanting to make this video for a couple of years now, but I've always been scared because obviously nobody wants to get hate but I just felt like I needed to talk about it because it's real racism it was a real thing here in Australia it happens to not only me but or black people it happens to Asians it happens to Indians it happens to Aboriginals I would say that I don't cop it as worse as Aboriginals and Asians it, Aboriginals cop it the worst here but um i'm only speaking from my experience some have it worse than others some don't so this is just my experience okay okay start from when i first moved to australia my dad got married to an australian woman when i was like 11 years old it was in 2003 i moved to australia to be with my dad and his new wife and she had a son as well and I basically did middle school here and then I went back to America for high school. So I went back when I was in year nine and then came back, back to Australia when I, was, when I graduated high school to like do university, whatever. When I first came to Australia when I was 11-ish, I noticed that, you know, when kids realized that I was American, African-American, um, they would ask me really crazy questions. They'd be like, oh, are you from the hood? Like, do you own a gun? Have you ever been on Jerry Springer? Uh, what else? They would just, I don't know, they just asked me really crazy things. Do you like fried chicken? And I was a, I was a child, so, and it was my first time ever leaving the country, so I just thought it was really funny. I thought it was hilarious. I was loving the attention. Like, I was just like, yeah, like, I would go along with some of it sometimes because I just was like, how? would anybody in their right mind actually believe this stuff like they've got to be joking and you know when I was younger it didn't really affect me that much um, I will say with the, with the exception of one time though me and my dad and his other friend who is a African-American guy we were just walking through the city I was 12 years old and we were just minding our own business and this guy just called us the n-word out of nowhere this is in Sydney Australia and I was really surprised because I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so I was born in California, but I was basically raised between Atlanta, Georgia, and Sydney, Australia, like most of my life. And you would think that I would experience more racism in Atlanta, but I didn't. I actually, the first time I was ever called the N-word to my face was in Sydney, Australia, okay? And it's really interesting because a lot of people here don't think they're racist. I get a lot of, a lot of the time people come at me and they're like, oh, like, they'll say all these things like, oh, we're not racist here. Like, we accept everyone, but that's totally far from the truth. It's actually a big fat lie, and I don't understand why people always say that. So, and they're always comparing American racism to Australian racism, like, as in Australia just doesn't have it, and I always have to let their asses know, you're wrong. So, let's fast forward to me moving back here when I graduated high school in America. So, when I first came back, I was 18, and I started dating this guy, okay? And it was cool. He was really nice at first, but I noticed that him and his friends loved to say racist like black jokes and stuff. And mind you, I was I kind of grew up in predominantly white neighborhoods even in Atlanta. Most of the kids that I went to school with like were white, and most of the people I went to school with here were white as except for like one school that I went to, which was an amazing school. It was a really multicultural North Mead High School. What's that? Represent. But, um, <laughs> so when you grow up in predominantly white areas, you kind of have a blind eye. You kind of have a really high tolerance for casual racism because everyone's kind of always doing it and you just tell yourself that, oh, well, it's not racist because I'm not that black person that they're talking about. You know, I don't identify with those kind of things. I'm going to call him Jacob. He was Jewish and um, the reason that that'll come into play later. So I noticed that him and his friends would like to say black jokes. Um, 
I remember when we first started dating, he showed me photos of when they love to do dress up parties here. And I guess him and his friends decided to have an American party. So what did they do? They showed up in blackface and some of the guys literally showed up in all of blackface. You know, I don't want to rock the boat. I was just like, oh, that's funny. Like, ha ha ha. Don't know why you're showing me this. This is kind of awkward with the whole racist jokes thing. One day we were just like sitting on their balcony and him and his brothers decided to literally say every, they literally went on the internet, on their phone and pulled up every black joke and proceeded to just like go down the line and say them. And they thought it was hilarious. At that time I did stick up for my, I was just kind of like, why would you do that? Like, that's not funny. That's not cool. And they were like, oh, well, why don't you just give it back to us? Like, you know, just throw it back in our face. Like, why don't you just say white jokes and stuff? And it's funny because you notice they said white jokes. They didn't say Jewish jokes. So it was kind of like, we're allowed to, we are allowed to make fun of you about your identity and your culture, but don't come for the Jews. And I would never do that anyway. It was just a really weird thing. I, I was just like, oh, that's really funny. Like, so you're allowed to say racist black jokes. But when you want me to throw it back at you, I can only say white jokes, not Jewish jokes. Not that I would anyway. But you, you see, you see how that's kind of funny? You know what I mean? Another thing that I thought was really weird was one day me and Jacob were just chilling and he made this comment. And I think that's when I started kind of realizing that he had no, no respect for my identity. Something along the lines of, why do black people in movies always make themselves lawyers or doctors when you know they're not like that in real life? And I kind of was just like, really dude, like what do you mean, what do, what do you know? You know, like you've got no idea, you've only been to America one time and you went to Disneyland, like how do you know that there's that there's not black doctors and lawyers and people that are have really important jobs that are black but everything the thing is though everything was always a joke so anytime I ever tried to defend myself or snap back it was always like oh you're taking it too seriously it was just a joke calm down Mickey like come on like just have a laugh and why am I always the joke why does it have to be me one day Jacob just decided to tell me that only black girls wear makeup and like false eyelashes and hair extensions and that that was that was just a black girl thing not a white girl thing and I was just like wow you're a fucking idiot every girl wears makeup and hair extensions and false eyelashes and fake nails like it's not just the black thing he was super adamant on that oh this really fucking pissed me off so one day we were like he came from like a, a big family and his parents were really cool like they never said anything racist to me they always made me feel super welcomed they were really beautiful people um, but it was just the siblings that kind of were a bit pretentious and rude and here's an example so we're all sitting you know playing cards drinking having a good old time I think it was like just after Shabbat dinner or something and someone I think there was like friends around someone asked me they were like oh like where are you from in Africa and I said, um, I'm not from Africa. And his, his sister gave me the stankest, dirtiest look and was like mortified that I had said that. And she was like, excuse me, we're all from Africa. Like, how dare you say that? The oldest bones were found in Africa. We're all from Africa. And I just, <sighs> mind you, it's just me, okay? And it's like, I don't know. I just felt like it was like me against them and I I just felt so stupid it was kind of like obviously that's not what I meant like yes the oldest bones were found in Africa which means yes we're all from Africa but if you were to put me in any country in Africa I wouldn't know the native language I don't have relatives uh, relatives there yes my aunt sisters are from Africa but I don't know where the fuck though they're from you know didn't you hear about the slave trade what the fuck you're supposed to be this educated person and you're trying to shame me in front of all these people because I said I don't come from Africa anyways I secretly like hated her from that point on <laughs> because I was just so embarrassed and it was just so rude. I just need a fucking minute. Whew, okay. And back to that whole comment that Jacob said when he said, 
why do black people in their movies always make them be like lawyers or doctors when you know <laughs> they're not that's when I realized that Jacob looked at me and my culture as a lesser than him but mind you all these comments were just jokes so because they always said oh it's a joke that didn't give me space to really stick up for myself whatever she's just being sensitive and an angry black girl it's kind of like a lose-lose situation okay so me and Jacob, we went to Israel, India, and Thailand. He went to, I think it's called a kibbutz, I don't know, but he had friends and family in Israel. So um, we got to stay with them. And mind you, okay, so mind you, up until this point, I've just been dealing with all these fucking jokes and all these little snide remarks that are literally eating away at my confidence. And we get to Israel and, you know, it's that same thing where like no one's really been around a black American chick. So it's like as soon as people see you, they just like go in on you with all the questions that are super stereotypical. You just feel like, I just started to feel like I couldn't be myself. It was like anyone that came in, into contact with me only wanted to talk about black American culture. And it was like, they don't even care about who I am. They just want to like confirm if black people really do this and that and everything else so there was this one night they were all like really nice people but there was this one night where it was like everyone just went in like everyone it was me Jacob his friends or whatever and they all just went in they all fucking went in on me and just were relentless with the jokes the comments everything everything was funny everyone was having a good time and I literally lost my shit and I fucking exploded. Up until then I couldn't understand why it was affecting me so much when it was just a joke, right? Like why am I being so um, sensitive and why is this affecting me so much when they're just being like they're just trying to be nice? I don't know. I was on some coon and ass shit. I said, Jacob, you need to tell your friends to chill the fuck out because I'm gonna go crazy. I'm so sick of being put in a box constantly everywhere we go i'm in a fucking box all the time and i'm gonna explode because i'm more than what you guys are telling me that i am you know and i'm not even allowed to defend myself because if i fucking do that i'm a crazy black girl i don't know what to do like how do i win how do i get how do i let you know that what you're saying is eating away at my confidence how do i translate that to you he i think he got it he got the message and you know we moved on from that situation, but I just, I don't know, from then on I think I just kind of secretly started resenting him because everything just kind of caught up with me. I couldn't pretend like I was okay with it anymore. <sighs> it was a lot to deal with. And it was slightly abusive, like the things that he would say to me were actually emotionally abusive. He knew that it was, it was hurting me, he knew that after a while it wasn't a joke, but they kept doing it anyway. That relationship, like, there's so many other things I could tell you, but it's too much. That relationship ended really, really, really badly. I'm not gonna say that I'm a victim in it. Um, I had my problems too. I had a lot of things going on at home at the time. And um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. At a few cafes around Sydney, and I'm just gonna like, list some of the things that people have said to me um so i started working at this one cafe on parameter road i'm not gonna like out these cafes and the bosses and all this stuff because i'm not here to like get anyone in trouble i'm just this is like really therapeutic for me okay so i started working at this cafe and this like gay guy this white gay male and the reason why i'm saying that is because i feel like white gay men can be actually the most the worst at racism they think because they're gay and I'm a black woman that we like connect on this level but we don't like this guy it's the end of service and you know we're starting to close up wiping down things everyone's kind of relaxing I'm the new girl and this guy comes into my face and he's like oh my god I just love this I love this you're a black girl you're a black girl you're a black girl you're a black girl it's like yeah I fucking know I'm a black girl everyone's like you know around us and he goes can I call you Shaniqua and I said no, you fucking can't call me Shaniqua. Like, I don't even, it's like my second day here and you're already comfortable. And then, and then he proceeds to ask me, do black girls have pink vaginas? In front of everyone. And everyone just burst into laughter. And I said, you know, why don't you look at a fucking porn site? 
if that'll answer your question. I was just so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed and I didn't know what to do. I actually did talk to the man like to the manager about it, but nothing was done and I ended up walking out of the middle of service because I was just so fucking disgusted with all the people that work there and this their stupid shit. Nobody deserves to be ostr ostracized like that in front of all of their employees. If I have a pink vagina, that is so disgusting and rude. Hello! So another cafe that I worked at, it's a really popular cafe here. This was the owner, okay? This was the owner of the cafe. Every time a long black coffee would come up, he'd say, black up, and then when I would be the person to get that coffee, he'd be like, darkness, everybody, darkness! And that was literally what he called me like the whole entire time I worked there. He was Asian, so I feel like he thought he could say things. Like, he was like, oh, it's not racist when I say it because I'm an Asian, but it's like, not really. That's still kind of racist. I don't know why I dealt with that place for so long. I don't know why I dealt with a lot of things for so long. But, um, yeah. It was just like a an ongoing thing, so these are just like one-off examples, but it happened a lot. Like, so he would call me darkness a lot, like every day. And, you know, I don't like, I'm not the kind of person that likes, I don't like confrontation. I really don't. So I just didn't, you know, I want, I don't want to rock the boat you know so I would just kind of laugh it off and be like yeah whatever stop calling me that like please stop calling me that like <laughs> not really joking stop fucking calling me that so yeah that happened at work and then now we're gonna go we're just gonna like talk about just being me just being out in the world in Australia so especially when I go out and stuff I'm really really wary of the people that are around me because I can almost pinpoint the person that's gonna say some racist shit. I can see their mind turning, they're like, okay, this is a black chick, wow, I haven't seen a black chick, whoa, like, I really wanna talk to her, I really wanna ask her questions, but I'm just gonna like ease in there. I guess I understand from their point of view, they're like, oh, well there's not a lot of you around here, so when you see a black girl, you kinda just like, pounce, okay, I'm a dual citizen, I grew up here, and I grew up in America, that shit gets annoying, I'm not a fucking tourist, I don't think it's cute, leave me the fuck alone, I'm just here trying to have a dance with my friends, and a, and a few drinks, like, leave me alone, when I would start dancing and stuff, people, mostly white girls, would literally circle me and just be like, twerk, twerk, yeah, oh my god, black girl can twerk, boo, and it's like, I was, I did not go out tonight to entertain you guys, I came out to have a good time, please, get the fuck out of my face, like, <laughs> leave me alone. It's funny because ever since I've been with my girlfriend, you know, she has brought it up without me having to bring it up, you know, she was just like, wow, people really treat you differently here, and I was like, <sighs> thank you, you see it, like, I'm not going crazy, she's like, yeah, it's like, people just don't know how to be around you, it's like, they either are racist and rude, or they act like you're this exotic being, and they don't s stop staring, like, they just won't even look away, it's kind of weird, and I was like, yeah, so that would happen all the time, that still happens, I was just out the other night with some friends, and I was, you know, I was a little drunk, I was getting it, and this guy just, just starts grabbing me, and recording me and being like, yes, like twerk. And I was just like, get the fuck off me. And the people that I was with were like, you know, they're about to square up. They're like, don't fucking touch her. And I was like, yeah, don't fucking touch her. And he couldn't understand why I didn't want to twerk for him for his Snapchat. He was just like, what are you guys like? Why are you so angry? And because I don't fucking know you and you're touching me and you're trying to feel me. Like, who the fuck are you? It was another incident. That was the first time I ever stuck up for my stu stood up for myself in public because I just had enough. Like I had enough. Maybe like two years ago, I probably would have just like ignored it. But I've been dealing with that kind of shit for so long. I just don't have it in me anymore to um, pander to that bullshit and make other people feel okay. And I took a photo of him because I was like, fuck you, I'm going to shame you online. Even though no one really shared it. <laughs> Felt really good. And next time he sees a black girl and decides to call her fucking Shaniqua, he will think twice. So yeah, this, everything that I've told you, it's kind of happened over the last, you know, I came here when I was 18, I'm 25 now. Um, I got out of that relationship with Jacob when I was like 21. 
and after that I just kind of became a recluse I stopped really wanting to talk to people and I got into a really big de I got really depressed because I just realized that people only saw me for the color of my skin and I, I think I was just so used to I was so used to ignoring that and then all of a sudden it catches up to you that's why I get so angry when I see like these people on the internet you know you guys are just whingy babies like you can't joke about anything anymore like everyone's just a cry baby black people just need to get over themselves I did try to do it your way I tried to suck it up take it on the chin and it was just a joke like it doesn't mean anything but whilst doing that I lost myself and I became really fucking depressed and I didn't want to do anything because I just felt dirty you know I lost hope for a minute there I lost hope for like <laughs> A good three years I just didn't want to be around people and I was really like scared to meet new people because most of the time that I did it was just like really ignorant it was a really ignorant conversation and I just felt used like I just felt people I felt like people just wanted to like have a piece of me and then fuck off I started going to therapy I'm really cautious about who I talk to and that's not cool like I don't want to go through life feeling like that I really value those people that can come up to me or I can go to them and we can have a conversation it has nothing to do with me being black or American you know Australians really love to compare America and Australia and it's funny because when I was younger people would you know go in on me about how shitty the food in America was and how fat we were and how people liked fried chicken like they put syrup maple syrup on like salty things and it's so funny because now you can't go anywhere without it being like an American themed restaurant burgers and fried chicken and chicken and waffles it's just kind of like you know it's just a bit like yeah I think they like to think that they're more progressive than America and um I guess in a lot in ways that they are but in ways that they're not and they're not when it comes to racism people don't even talk about aboriginals here like like people don't think of them as humans here and it's actually really sad it's so just I've gotten over trying to make white Australians comfortable with their racism I can't do that shit anymore if you come at me expect it back I don't want to argue I don't want to argue with people I don't fucking like arguing but I'm not gonna let someone put me in a box any longer I'm totally done with that shit I'm gonna like Australians come on their high horse when I'm around and be like oh yeah in Australia we do this we do that we're so much better and it's like actually the first time I was ever called the n-word was in Australia so shut the fuck up <laughs> So yeah, it's really casual here. The racism is very casual. No one actually thinks they're doing it, which kind of makes it worse. Um, I would love to hear what other people will like, because obviously I know I'm not the only black person that lives abroad. Yeah, I need tips on how to like combat this in a way where it's kind of to the point and I move on. Right now, I just avoid the situation. I literally run away like I don't run away but I'm like I am busy da, 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 da. I can't see you and that's not that's not good <sighs> look I don't think all Australians are racist I don't think all Australians are racist I don't think all Australians are racist absolutely not that's not what I'm saying not that's not what I'm saying but I think a lot of you are <laughs> It's not just the bogans because I hear that a lot. They're like, oh, only bogans are racist. And most of the people that I was talking about were upper class, upper middle class people. These aren't bogans that don't know what the fuck is going on in the world. Yeah, that's what, you know, because when I say I'm like, oh, it's racist, like there is racism in Australia. I do experience it like, oh, but they were probably bogan, weren't they? And I'm like, actually, no. White people's discomfort has nothing to do with me. That's your own problem. It's not my problem, it's your problem. You need to sort it out on your own. I just wanted to talk about that, get it off my chest. It actually feels so good to get this off my chest. It's not gonna go away. It feels good just to talk about it. I know there's other people that deal with racism here as well. I guess I just have this like bitterness towards it because Australians just love talking about what's going on in America and the black culture and what's going on with Black Lives Matter and Trump, but nobody looks in their own backyard. Nobody cares about what's happening with Aboriginals here or other minorities. He's like, why are you so fixated on that? You've got your own shit to take care of. You don't actually know what's going on over there.
in America and Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, but they've never even been to America. Like, sit the fuck down. You just regurgitated some stupid shit off of Facebook. Don't come for me. So, or you've only been to America and when you do go, you go to LA, New York, and Las Vegas. Like, you don't know me. Anyways, it's hot as fuck here. I'm gonna finish my VB and um, I'm gonna go swimming. <laughs> There's other things that have happened to me that doesn't have to do with racism. Actually, please let me know if you guys know what I'm talking about and have experienced this shit and had your like coming to Jesus moment and fucking went nuts like I did. <laughs> please put it in the comments section. If you think I'm, if you think this video is like whingy and that I'm making it all up and that I'm a stupid bitch, well, please get down on your knees and suck my BBC. Okay? Mwah. Happy New Year, people, and um, enjoy your holidays.